all right guys welcome back so in the last video we created our enemy and made sure we applied randomization to our enemy so that when it gets destroyed and created again it should appear in random places so as you can see when we reload our program it's going to respawn in a different place so in this video we are going to make sure that our enemy is moving so imagine that there are multiple enemies right now there is just when one enemy and we haven't created multiple enemies so there is not any problem but imagine there are multiple enemies and they are moving from left to right and they're also when they hit the boundary they come a little bit down so that's what we are going to be focusing on today we are not going to be creating multiple enemies but we are going to be focusing on the movement of this one single enemy and then we can apply it to multiple enemies but let's for right now just focus on one enemy so what exactly do we want from this enemy what kind of movement do we want so what we want it to do is move from right to left in x direction so for example this enemy will move in the right hand side and when it hits the boundary that is about 736 or 800 pixels it should change its direction and move towards the left hand side and when it reaches the left hand side then again when it hits that zero coordinate x coordinate then it should again change its direction and move towards the right hand side so this is the movement in the x direction now there is also a movement in the y direction so whenever it hits a boundary whether it can be right boundary or the left boundary then it should come a little bit down so that imagine there are multiple enemies and we are trying to shoot all of those enemies down so how will the game get over so whenever these enemies hit the boundaries and come down at one point of time they are going to hit the spaceship as they are coming down and then we'll make it game over like in the classic space invader so we need to execute the x movement and as well as we need to execute the y movement now this all is going to be very easy because you already know how to move the spaceship and we are going to do the same thing that we did in the player so first of all we'll just scroll up let's minimize this over here so we're going to slow up and because our enemy is going to have the exchange as well as the y movement so i'm just going to copy this over here and also make sure that we add a y movement now enemy exchange over here we are going to give it the value of 0.3 maybe in future we will speed it up because our spaceship is also at the speed of or exchange of 0.3 maybe we will change it up on future but right now I'm just going to give it a value of 0.3 now I'm not giving it a value so for example in player we haven't uh, we have just given it a value of 0 over here and below over here we have changed its direction by typing in negative and positive we are not going to do this with our enemy we are just going to provide the value of 0.3 over here now if we scroll down we are just going to do the same thing that we did with our player so for example over here we made sure that if it hit the boundary so this is the algorithm basically you can call it the algorithm but it's pretty simple so whenever it hits the zero coordinate we change its value to zero and whenever it gets greater than 736 we make sure that it coordinates get to 736 again and this prevents the spaceship from going out of bounds so this is a kind of way of checking the boundary so we can do the same thing with our enemy so let me just copy and paste this over here and instead of everywhere player we are just going to call it enemy so e should be in uh, small so over here also let me just copy actually enemy and paste it everywhere this is going to make sure that we save up some time not a lot of time but so let's paste this enemy over here over here i wish there was a quicker way to do it but it's not so anyways now i'm just gonna add a comment over here so that you guys can understand what we are talking about over here so checking for boundaries of spaceship so it doesn't go out of bounds and over here we're just gonna write uh, maybe enemy movement enemy movement and this looks pretty good now instead of restricting us uh, what we want is whenever a boundary is hit we want it to go someplace so for example when it hits that left boundary we want to increase the value of x so that it starts going in the right hand side direction and similarly when it hits this right hand side boundary then we want to decrease the value of x and this will keep on happening because it's inside our while loop so now we are going to use the same arithmetic operation that we used with our player so if we scroll up a little bit you can see when we wanted to change directions we give uh, when we wanted to move towards the left we gave it a value of minus and when we wanted to move towards the right we gave it a positive value of 0 0.3 and then we just added 
because of this arithmetic property. So we are going to do the same thing over here. So instead of enemy x equals to zero, what we are going to do is we are going to write enemy x change equals to 0 0.3. And so, so that basically when it hits this left hand side, that is the zero coordinate, it can start going towards a positive direction. That is, it should start increasing the x value. And similarly, we want when we want it uh, to go left hand side, we are going to change it to a minus value. So we are going to give it a value of minus and this should be enough guys. So, and actually if I scroll up, you can see that I've put the value of enemy X underscore change equals to 0 0.3. We can leave it to zero or we can leave it to 0 0.3. It doesn't really matter. So let's run it and see if it works. So uh, let me just close down the previous implementation so that we don't get confused. And I'm just going to run it again, run main and hopefully the enemy will start moving. So you can see that the enemy is moving from left hand side to right hand side. And actually this looks pretty awesome. So now you can see that it's not moving in the Y direction. It's just moving in the X direction. So what we want is that when it hits the right boundary, it should move downwards or even if it hits the left boundary, it should move a little bit downwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add enemy Y change equals to 40 so that we can move it down by 40 pixels. So why, when do we want it to move down? We want it to move down when it hits the boundary that is the zero coordinate or the 736 coordinate. So we can just increase the value of Y over here and that should be enough. So I'm just going to write enemy Y plus equals to, and then we want the enemy Y change. Just let it, let's just paste over here and then we can do the same thing over here. Let's not erase that, let's just add it over here. So now let's just reload it and uh, see how it looks. So now you can see when it hits the boundary, it actually goes a little bit down. So you can imagine multiple enemies, when they are hitting the boundary, they are going down. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult for a spaceship to eliminate all of them, but it's going to try its best. And when this enemy reaches the spaceship, we are gonna give it a game over. And depending upon how many enemies we can hit with our bullet, which will be creating mostly in the next video or in the coming up videos, depending upon how many enemies he can eliminate with that bullet, the score is going to be according to that. So you can kind of get the idea of the game with this video as to how the game was going to look. So that's pretty much it guys.